All right, welcome to Leap Mid 54, February 2022 Trade Log Review and Technical Analysis. So we're going to get started with technical analysis part first and then move on to the Trade Log Review. Can you guys see my screen? I'll take that as a yes. Um, so a little history lesson here first. If you guys remember, uh, Russia, this is not the first time Russia has invaded Ukraine. They tried to, the same thing about seven years ago, uh, 2014 February. And this is what happens to the market at that time where <clears throat> it was at the all time high for that period and then pulled back sharply. But when you look at the overall period, overall market <clears throat> on weekly since then, um, that is nothing but a little spot and an overall uptrend. Um, and then here we have the pullback, major pullback since then after this period right here. Um, this was due to, um, and this one started about October, went all the way till December. And this was mainly due to the same sort of scenario with the, with the um, intensifying trade war between US and China, if you guys remember it, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, and also on the fear of central bank uh, tightening the monetary policy, slowing economy, et cetera. And we saw this pullback. And then we recover from it for next two years. <clears throat> and then COVID-19 hit, pulled back again, recovered from that again as well, very strongly. And here we are now, um, same situation as Russia invading Ukraine, monetary policy being tightened by the feds, uh, inflation worries, um etc um this whole thing started about you could say it started september where we saw back and then a quick recovery and then basically stock markets started to trade sideways or pretty much halted like it would pull back <clears throat> go up pull back again go up again no clear direction and then come january of this year um, it just started this downtrend that we are in right now. Now, how long this downtrend and or the sideways will last, um, that's TBD. No one can predict that. Um, what you can make be sure about is that market will recover from it. We have some bigger bigger event like COVID-19 trade wars, which was a similar type of situation with the monetary policy being tightened and interest rate increase and et cetera to fight off the China trade war. Um, we have seen significant pullback like this again and again and again. Um, this COVID-19 situation was a diff bit different because when it fell, it fell very quickly and then it recovered very quickly. Whereas here we are seeing a lot of back and forth. Bears are not giving in, bulls are not giving in. It's still going down, but bouncing back ridiculously out of nowhere, like we seen last week, uh, Thursday and Friday. Um, so it's all over the place at the moment. Uh, 100 um uh, <clears throat> session uh, ema is still moving up 200 is also moving up uh 50 day 50 session is curling back down but overall trend is still up so the point i'm trying to make here is that even though last three weeks has last three months pretty much or you can say since september it has been very um challenging market to trade into when you look at the overall picture for 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 stock market this type of pullback and this type of periods are not uncommon and we have seen quite a few of them in recent years like 2018 to 2019 which was similar 
where market only went made new all time high around September and then back sharply again. That was a very tough period to trade into as well. But when we do after this huge pullback, what do you want to what do you want to keep an eye on is this sharp reversal in the market. After 2018, we saw it make a new all-time high and pretty much go up for two years straight up. Um, minor pullbacks here and there, which is common, but overall trends straight up. Same thing with Mar um, COVID-19 pullback. Markets went straight up for next two years. Um, so this type of pullbacks are fairly common. If you started trading after this pullback here, you probably are not aware of it or haven't traded in this type of market scenarios before. Um, but it, this isn't something that's new. This isn't something that hasn't happened before. Um, the variables might be different. The way market is reacting to it might be different. Um, when you look at the micro uh, analysis of the individual names and indexes that might be different but when you look at the big picture overall picture um, the general trend is up and after every strong pullback the opportunities that comes with it are tremendous two three weeks three months four months of a pullback is usually followed by two three years of uptrend same as here as you can see 15 to 16 and then once it started regaining momentum from 16 to almost till 2018, two years of uptrend, same thing again, another year, six, a year here, you can say about a year here, but then two years of straight uptrend, another two, three months of pullback, two years of uptrend. And this trend pretty much continues throughout the history of stock market pullback and then years of uptrend pullback and then years of uptrend. And that has happened since pretty much 2008 melt off in the market where we see it go down hugely. And pretty much after 2007, it didn't, it didn't recover for to back to those highs until like 2013. So that was the meltdown and that was the once in a lifetime type of um, scenario, uh, which is a, unusual before 2008, we saw a 2000 uh, market crash. So every eight, nine years or so, we see the market crash happens. After every smaller pullback, we see two, three years of upturn happen. So this has been the general uh, overall picture of the market. So point I'm trying to make is that even though last three months or four months has been challenging, um, if market can survive this and bounce back from this, um, we can see another um, uptrend starting fairly soon. Um, so just keep an eye on that. Um, a lot of stocks are near discounted level, near very attractive buy level. So um, let's see where we go from here. But this is a little history lesson on what happened when Russia... Uh, or when when there was a major war event that happened uh, around the world. So SPY, let me change it back to the daily. <clears throat> so SPY pretty much pulled back entire week last week and a week before that. Uh, it Since February 9th, it pretty much went straight down and bottomed out on Thursday at almost 15% pullback um, and then bounce back Thursday and Friday made really nice recovery. Now we have seen it done. We have seen market do this before where it pulled back here to 422 and then bounce back and then consolidate and try to go higher, um, then pull back again, try to go higher again and then failed again. Now, what is different this time is that Last time it sold off after making this nice recovery, it sort of sold off. Whereas this time around, it made another huge green bar. So could this be a potential change in direction? Absolutely. Um, unless um, Russia try to do uh, start a nuclear war, 
uh, most likely what's going to happen is that they, I'm not sure if you guys have read the news yet, but Russia is asking Ukraine to sit down and talk uh, and compromise and figure out a diplomatic solution. So this has been their playbook as well, where they invade um, and then ask for diplomatic solution once West Western countries um, impose the sections on it. And then in order for them, Ukraine and Russia to reach treaty, they will say that we want Russia, Western countries to ease the sanction or get rid of it entirely. And then Western country will comply so that they can reach peace treaty and Russian troops will move back. This has been their playbook for quite some time now. Um, so now they're sitting down to reach a diplomatic solution. Uh, let's see what comes out of that. If they do reach it, then it will be a good sign for market uh, because another um, prolonged war will, will be avoided. Uh, sanctions will have to ease off. That, that most likely will be their one of their condition to reach the treaty. Um, so point is, unless they the war escalate from here and escalate dramatically, this could be the bottom in the market um, unless there is another new factor is is introduced like China now using uh, this as an opportunity to invade Taiwan, which people has been commenting on and a lot of uh, scholars has been um, has been commenting on. So that is another possible scenario that could happen. So a lot of moving pieces here that's going on. So where we will go from here, it's hard to tell. Um, it entirely depends on the news cycle at the moment. So positive, we go up. Negative, we most likely shrug off. Hugely negative where, like I said, if it escalates, the war situation is escalated then we might start to go back down again. So a lot of moving pieces, market is, is still undecided, undetermined uh, when it comes to the direction uh, in which it wants to go. But if last two days are any indication, um, then this could be uh, the bottom and we could either start consolidating in this area or start to climb back up. 100 day SMA is at 445 for SPY. Um, so 200 days, I mean, my bad. If we reclaim that, then that would be a strong bullish signal and change of direction. So keep an eye on that one on our overall picture. If we fail at that one, then uh, another pullback towards 420 could come. Um, again, a lot of this and technical analysis is will become invalid in blink of an eye if some sort of big news starts coming out. Um, right now, everything is very volatile. So no levels, no technical analysis is going to help you um, if, <clears throat> if um, a major news break out, positive or negative. If it's positive, let's just say come Monday, Russia and Ukraine say they have reached the agreement, market will take off. Uh, if they are, if Russia says, oh, we are, we are ready for nuclear war, market will tank. At that point, no matter how strong your technical analysis is, um, it won't matter much because right now the whole condition of the stock market as well as the world is very volatile and could go in either direction. So be careful of that as you're taking position, keep it small uh, and only quick trades. Again, this volatility is not, not entirely a bad thing. It can give you good opportunity to take trades, but just be careful. Don't hold and hope for a bigger reward. 10, 15, 20% is great. You, you keep on trading, Keep on trading, look for re-entry, book profit, look for re-entry. Um, if you're wrong, then just get out. If market changes direction, you change your bias with it. Um, as you have seen last week, we were like playing calls and put at the same time, even on Friday, 
uh, for Amazon, we played calls in the morning and uh, puts in the morning. And then when it started bouncing, we started, we changed our bias and started playing calls. So this is not the market where you um, hold and hope. Like if you put, if you're in a put position, this is not the market where you're like, okay, this is going to probably bounce and then sell back again. Or if you're in call position, you're like, okay, it's going to bounce back again. I still have like five days left. Um, each day is um, <clears throat> each day is different than the next one. So um, be careful. Don't hold position overnight unless you have to. And don't have a strong bias in one direction or the other. Look at the overall picture. Like I keep telling you guys that if overall market is bearish, then you be your your bias should generally be bearish, but you should be still be open to calls because one or two days there will be huge move on the upside as well. So um, that's for the spy. 445 is the level I'm watching on the upside. And then 430 is the level I'm watching on the downside going into the next week. <clears throat> QQQ, which is basically um, tech leading name ETF. Um, and on Thursday was down at 22%, which is basically in a bear market territory, bounced back strongly. And then again on Friday, it bounced back bounced up not as big of a bounce as spy made but it was still up nicely broke outside of this downtrend as well so going into next week i'm watching this 342 level right here this is where it consolidated before um this is where once it broke down it pulled back significantly this is where it was running to resistance last on wednesday as well um, so this is going to be 342 is going to be the wall level to watch on the downside and <clears throat> break below that the next one will be 335. If it manages to recapture this 352 level right here, um, then we can see we can confirm that there is a change in direction and we can we can continue to see it move up. Up, upside towards 370. Now this 50 day and 200 day SMAs are very close to each other. And if QQQ see another downturn here, then we can find this um, death cross event that I keep talking about, which is 50, the cross of 50 day and 200 day SMA. Uh, and this could be a very strong bearish signal. So keep an eye on it. The same thing happened. This is not as strong of a signal, um, but it's still pretty um, solid um, bearish signal where 100 day and 200 day, is, uh, 100 day and 50 day SMA cross. And as you can see, once that happened, it has been going down. So if this happened, we can see it pull back even further down. Um, so keep, keep, keep an eye on that as well. Uh, tech has been very weak um but most of the weakness is coming from mid cap and growth names uh rather than mega cap names like amazon and google even though amazon for example is down almost 700 points uh from all time high it's a down about 20 percent uh, let's just say 20 percent if i yeah, 18%, it's down about 18%. And one point it was down last week, about 25%. So even though Amazon has been weak and down, it's down about 20 to 25%, but the unicorn growth names like uh, Roku and Crowd, they, they are down significantly. So a lot of weakness in tech ETF is coming from this names like Crowd, Docu, um, Roku, uh, SQ, some of the names are down quite significantly, 50% uh, plus downturn. So a lot of the, those weaknesses is coming from those names that is affecting NASDAQ as well as QQQ. But when you look at the other names like Google and Amazon, they are down, but they are down about 20% rather than 50%. <clears throat> Anyway, Amazon bounced back up nicely again Thursday, Friday with the market. 
level to watch on the upside is 3,100 um, and then 3,137, 3,185 will be the level to watch on the upside. On the downside, uh, 3,000 is going to be the strong support level again. If it breaks below that last time it happened, uh, it went straight to 28 something. And then again, on, the <clears throat> on Wednesday, it went straight to 20, uh, almost 2,900. So 3,000 is the level to watch on the downside for Amazon. 3,100 is the level to watch on the upside. As the week goes on, if it stays between these two levels, it will start forming some intraday levels that we can utilize for entry and exit. Google, <clears throat> Google is down about 14% from all time high, like I was mentioning. And if you calculate the close on Friday, um, then only 10% off of its all time high, which shows you how strong this name is compared to the rest of the tech names, the rest of the market. So when the market starts to bounce, these are the names that will start to bounce uh, faster and before anything else. It also um, break above this downtrend that it was forming since making this all time high after earnings report. It's out of that downtrend now. So if it, we capture this 27.15, 2720 level right here, um, we can see it start to bounce towards 2800 pretty soon. So keep an eye on Google. Um, it, it's high on my watch list at the moment for going into next week uh, for the call side if the market remains strong. Shop um, down, this is, this is what I was talking about on Thursday. Shop was down almost 66% from its all time high. Now, if this name is part of your index or ETF, um, it's going to affect it significantly. So, um, <clears throat> a very, very weak name. Um, but this is, if you are playing equity, this is a good place to enter and shop. This is where you want to enter. Um, because Shopify, as a business entity, is a very strong business. Growth opportunity is still there. Um, it's doing very well, no real competition in the space either. Um, so if I were to, I'm already in it from thousand, I'm probably going to add this week into this name. I was out last couple of weeks. So going next this week, I will probably be adding uh, more into my shop equity position for the upside. Um, as far as call goes and options goes, um, the overall trend is downtrend. So um, if market turns red and things become weaker, shop will be the first name you where you would want to play puts in because uh, it has a lot of weakness. And when it goes down, it goes down big. So keep an eye on it. I'm not very really convinced on the call side, especially the long term, but um, intraday trading on the calls or puts is still possible. Shop has usually has very um, big range, which is very good when you're trading options, basically. Uh, so, so still keeping an eye on it. Apple is another name that is very strong and only down about 10% from all time high. And it's been like this since January, where every time it has pulled back every and market turn around it it goes up big and then when the market is going down it shows good resistance it doesn't just drop or sell off big because of, apple is one of the best business that is out there so that makes sense it pulled back on thursday pulled back almost to 200 day sma and then bounced back strongly rec reclaimed 100 day sma so on the downside this is the level i'll be watching on 260 162 if it breaks below that, then we can see it pull back towards 160 and then even further down. Um, as long as it's remain over 163 level, uh, I would be I would be looking at the calls in this name. Um, the, the premium, so if you have a smaller account, this is the name you, have, you want to keep an eye on uh, where you can buy multiple contracts um, and Overall, it's a strong name, so a very good name to play calls in, especially intraday. And I would not play puts in Apple, especially 
given the fact how strong it has been lately. Um, if it manages to recapture 170, that's a huge um, strong buy signal on the upside and change in direction. So keep an eye on that 162 level on the downside and 160 for the downside play and 163 for the upside play. Um, Netflix, I'm not really interested in it right now. It's uh, it's a very messy, very choppy stock. There is no clear direction or pattern. Intraday trading could be possible, but there are better names. Uh, Facebook, same scenarios. Um, down big has been in downtrend since the huge gap down uh, after the earnings hasn't recovered since downtrend is still intact. So if, if market turns and um, and, it, and it becomes weaker, this is one of the names where you can play puts. Calls in this name, I would not suggest at this point because a lot of uncertainty and not really sure how it works. Even though Thursday and Friday made a bounce, it still failed to break this downtrend. Um, which concerned me. So we'll see what happens with that this week. NVIDIA, very strong name, broke below 200-day SMA, recaptured it right away the next day. Now it's over that 230. 238 is the level to watch for the downside and then break below the 231 level would be a strong sell signal. So you can buy puts if it breaks below this 200-day SMA on the downside. As long as it stays above that, then calls can work for the upside. Level to watch on the upside will be 245 and then 247.50. And over that um, 250, obviously, because it's a round number, and then 256. Snap, another name that was down almost 70% and then bounced back very, very strongly. Now it's holding this level quite strongly. Um, not giving in, not selling off just yet. If it recaptured this 50-day SMA here, uh, then it can start to bounce towards full, um, 48, 40 levels uh, towards the 100-day SMA. Um, it is below all the simple moving averages for last 200 days, so um, still weak. But after this huge sell-off, it has recovered nicely. So um, once it get over this resistance from 50 day SMA, we could see it, we could see it start bouncing up. Um, Roku, we played it um, successfully a couple of times um, last week. It's still moving sideways, not making those huge jump on the upside as I would like, but it's a slow moving name now. It used to have a big range associated with it, but at this point, um, it's getting slower and slower by the day. So not much we can do beside playing some intraday calls uh, on a strong day where it makes a good bounce. Um, Tesla broke below th this 800 level on Thursday right here. Close very close to 760, recaptured it again on Thursday and then tried to bounce over 820 on Friday, but failed. Closed pretty break even, um, nothing to were nothing too strong or too weak at the moment. Um, when it was trading in range around this 900 level, it made pretty much the similar move. As you can see, it dropped huge and then recovered bigly and then started trading sideways. Same thing happened, it dropped big, recovered. So I wouldn't be surprised if it started, if it started to trade um, between 780 and 820 range for next week. If it breaks above 820, the next resistance is at 833. And then 845, 45, 40, 844, and then 858. Um, those will be the level to watch on the upside. On the downside, puts below 780 can work. Um, no, no real support after that until 760. And then 
all the way to 700 almost. Um, so that is 780 is the level to watch on the downside. Those are some of the names that I wanted to talk about personally. If there is any other name that you want to talk about, then please feel free to put it in the chat. <clears throat> I'll go over it. Quick um, trade log review. You all know the importance of trade log. Um, so looking back at February, um, first week started out pretty good. Uh, some good trades that we take. Amazon was the highlight on Friday. But other than that, we took some trades. Good 20, 15, 20, 30 percent return overall for most part. And then comes week two, where this is where markets started getting a little bit more um, volatile and directionless. And this is where everything started going haywire, like market was going down and then recovering and then down and then recovering, uh, that sort of situation. So, um, not nothing to brag about uh in week two and week three week three was even worse than week two was um mainly because this ukraine situation exploded and market just took the plunge even before you get a chance to uh, react and at the same time earnings were coming out and good earnings like we played upst and airbnb here for good gains, but the very next day, it pretty much everything sold off. And then again on Friday, it was going crazy in, in both direction, like this Tesla call that we played returned 200%, uh, but when we tried to do it again, it failed and gave us like 35% um, loss. But so week two, week three, very, uh, very, very strange and difficult market to trade into, which is pretty much um, evident in the trade log. We come week four, but, uh, we were off Monday, and then Roku was the star of the day on, on Tuesday. We made some good gains in Roku, and then Amazon, and then um, this one, Apple call work here as well. Um, and then this Friday, I don't know what's going on here. Um, this Friday was turning direction uh, where most of the calls that we took work out great. Some good returns, 100%, 100%, 173%. Uh, only one Amazon call that failed. Um, if I were to hold that a little bit longer, it would have worked out because this the very same call, uh, we played it again when it went down and we got about 173% return on it. So Thursday and Friday were good. Even Monday, Tuesday, even though overall market was bad, we still managed to focus on some of the strong names and got some good returns. Um, I personally think that we are seeing the tail end of the this bad market. Um, unless, like I said again uh, before, um, unless things get worse on a world stage from here on where nuclear war breaks out or um, Russia still capture um, Ukraine capital Kyiv um, or entire Ukraine for that matter, something like that, something huge happens uh, going forward, then we can still go lower and the uh, market still can crash further. Um, but we're, we are getting the tail near the tail end of it, and this is where um, that turnaround will happen, and this is where you want to get in uh, and make most of it, um, make most of the upside. And as I showed you guys earlier, usually after this sort of pullback and mundane months where market either trade sideways or go down, it, it is usually followed by two, three years long rally, right? Um, and that has happened for past 20 years. Um, so let's see what happens this time around, but I think we are getting near it. I think the opportunities for the upside will start to show up. And even when there is no opportunity on the upside, we are still playing puts and we're still making money like on Amazon puts we played on Tuesday. Uh, we, we we got some good gains on that as well. So we 
So we are adapting and we are moving forward with this and let's see where this takes us. Uh, any questions? Right. Um, if you guys have don't have any questions, thank you again for joining on this fine Sunday, and I hope to see you all again on Monday. Um, and let's have another cracking wick. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Um, do you mean apple or ample? Sample. Sorry? Uh, AMPL, I think it's ample. Okay. Um, so a firm <clears throat> is a 39. Is that right? That's correct. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the reason I, uh, so I bought a, like you can say six months down the line call for 50 bucks. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, when like the market sold off, I think a couple of days ago, around Tuesday, yeah. I bought a firm yeah. and AMPL, I think six months down the line calls and even Sophie, SOFI. So they yeah. that's in banking, right? So those three, so. Yeah. I mean, right? <clears throat> The new age banking will survive this. Uh, Affirm, Sophie, um, Square, those are all uh, the second uh, generation banking sort of thing. As long as they are open to crypto, they will survive just fine. But this downturn in Affirm is quite surprising from 166 almost to 39. Um, that so is, you, you might want to add it yeah. on equity side, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it it might come 100%. to around 2025 and it would be a good buy because I think so Shopify also has a stake in it. Uh, so that's oh, the reason okay. their balance sheet was crude as well because yeah, of this entire yeah, fall. Makes sense. Yeah, but the, this, this like I said, the, the business side of it is pretty legit and there is nothing to worry about on that side. Um, so yeah, I will look to... I think I already have a credit position in it. Uh, may add more to it though. But yeah. Um, yeah, and backed by Shopify, a lot of other big equity firms are backing it as well. So nothing yeah. to worry about. It's just and all the reopening play, really, right? So I would like yeah. to add all the reopening play. So what happens is once things reopen, right? Uh, the transactions, yeah. how businesses run, right? it will add yeah. right so that's what my thinking was like i just thought let me have a different set of eyes kind of no 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 and you would be right it's a very good place to enter in it or add to your position if you're already in it <clears throat> and i bought the calls i bought the calls i bought were like you can say 50 calls <clears throat> I, I bought for 300 bucks 10 10 contracts which was dirt cheap mm. so like you can't ask for like better bang for buck. No, oh, okay. Um, no, no, no. I I completely agree. Um, it's a good place to enter in it. I don't, I don't see any more downside in the firm at the moment. Uh, actually, like you said, um, once things start to reopen, which he already has, um, next few earnings should be good for a firm and other uh, second generation banking firms like SQ and Sophie. And Upstart, etc. Uh, Ample, I'm not very familiar with this name. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to look more into it. But the chart wise, it looks it looks good. Um, it has after this big fall, it held at um, levels quite significantly. And if this trend continues, it will start to do the gap fall towards the high of the um, towards this. 38 level once it get over this 25. So the next resistance level for AMPL is going to be near 25. Yeah, added calls and equity both on this, not much exposure, but like when it fall off uh, on the earnings day, after hours yeah. I added it. So it was a, like yeah, a reasonable buy. 
just just be careful buying long term um, options. Equity is fine at one point or the other. Like I said, uh, and what that was one of the reason I showed the overall picture for last few like ten years or so. Um, it, it recovers back even if it's like a a year or two year long sideways or pullback sort of scenarios. Um, in the grand scheme of things, not only it recovers but it goes higher than it has ever been before, right? Uh, but when it comes to options in this market, you want to be a little bit more careful because you don't know if this type of wallet health situation is going to go on for another month or two months or six months or a year, right? If you're equity, you're solid because you have equity in it. Business is solid. It's not going to go out of um, business. So at one point or the other, you are going to get your money back. Whereas option will lose value over time, right? So if you have six months out and this situation stretch for another six months or a year, uh, then that money that you invested in options will expire worthless. So at the, at the moment, you want to look for something, like I said, um, shorter term, like ideally a day to day, like buy it, sell it, buy it, sell it, buy it, sell it. Don't hold it overnight. Once things get a little bit more smoother, a little less volatile, and a direction is established on the upside, then you can buy two, three months or six months out in contract, right? And then once strong direction uptrend is established and market pulls back a little bit, like a correction side, then you can buy like a yearly leap because now the overall trend has been established so that this minor pullback are going to go away within like a few days or a few weeks or a few months at most. But at this moment, at where we are right now, a lot of uncertainty uh, is there for the option side. So you don't want to hold it long term. You buy and sell it and get out of it, take your money and just go. Equity, you can add on, that's fine. They will, sooner or later, it's going to recover uh, and recover big. So <clears throat> just, just keep, it's something to keep in mind when you're buying um, longer term um, options. Yeah, one more, uh, yeah, sure, one more one, uh, FSLY. So fastly, uh -huh. <coughs> that has like, uh, it's a good business, but it has come down significantly. Yeah, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> 120 to almost 18. Yep. Yeah, I remember trading fastly back uh, last year. Um, so it I caught really my eye don't... on the earnings side. So it dropped significantly. And uh, from the business side of things, you have your like Akamai and other content management uh, like businesses, right? So yeah. I think like right now it's dirt cheap, technically speaking, yeah. right? So you like you can buy 100 and just forget about it and like it will give you returns. If I was supposed to yeah. buy at 120, then I'll think about it, right? 12 grand no no i agree and and yeah if you believe in the business buy equity if you know that business is good uh this level hasn't been seen last since very much covid yeah. covid covid drop right COVID, That's what yeah. Is, yeah so yeah yeah sure um if you <clears throat> again believe in the business and see that it's uh, it has a good future buy equity yep don't buy option at the moment because you don't know when it will start to recover. And during COVID, it has gone down to almost $10. So at the moment, your downside is about 40 to 50%, 50%. at most, whereas your upside is two, 300% or more on the upside if it starts to go back up again. Right? Mm -hmm. So more upside than the downside at the moment. So if you were planning to buy it, uh, equity in it, uh, go for it. Yeah. So yeah, these are the few names which I like kind of last two weeks it caught my eye and I like I studied the business and the management and overall. So I think it's cyclic yeah. because of the global uncertainty and the Fed and everything. So I think this is the yeah. best time to like if one has the like some cash which they are ready to blow away, I would put it that way, right? <laughs> because you yeah. nobody knows. No, what's I mean next. not ready to blow away. I mean any cash inequity is it's Again, like I've seen it happen yeah. over and over and over. Um, I have traded Roku 
um, I bought it like around at 85, 95, it went to like 35 and then from 35 or 45, it went up to almost 400. <laughs> I'll so, be honest with you, um, last February, AI, right? C3 AI, it, it, yeah. I think uh, the IPO came, it came to 190 and then on the downside, I like the business, Microsoft has a stake in it as well. Same thing, like 110, I bought it in my retirement account. That's down like 75%. It's at 20 bucks right now. <laughs> so just <laughs> same. It's crazy. Like Roku has gone to 26 from almost 75. I bought it around here mm. and I just held through this and then boom, sold it at like about 160 or something. I think it went to 400, right? Roku somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But this was before COVID and then COVID, it went yeah. down and I bought it again. And then it went to almost 400 and almost 500. Yeah, I remember 490. that. So a uh, huge swing there. Like, like when you look at the overall picture, it makes sense that... Um, holding equity for longer period of time usually give good returns, whereas options you want to do like a week, a day, or maybe a month at a time. Options provide good returns in shorter time frame, whereas equity provide good returns in a longer time frame. <clears throat> yep, inversely proportional. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyway, um, thank you for sharing those names and thank you again for joining everyone today. Uh, I'm going to go get some rest for myself and I will see you all again tomorrow and let's have a kick, kick-ass week again. All right. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you.